gentlemen, boys, and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Lone Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Fired up intro, Dio. I'm ready to roll. I, sounds like it. Hey, I have my war hat on. This is camo. Get this you. means that we are in the trenches. Yep. We are going to battle. We're going to war. For our loan partners and originators out there. For anyone in the mortgage industry who may be wondering, yeah. I wonder what it's like day in the life of a successful mortgage loan originator. I like that adjective you threw in there. Successful. If you want to be successful as a full-time professional mortgage loan originator, follow our lead. Mm. Do as we are going to explain mm -hmm. on this show. Let's do it. If you want to do it your own way, feel free. Yeah. Just know I used the word professional and successful together to talk about day in the life of a mortgage loan originator. You did. This is how we know, and we have grown accustomed to being professional and successful as a mortgage loan originator. Mm -hmm. You have to keep in mind when you listen to this episode, I'm talking to people who want to make a quarter million, half a million, or a million plus dollars a year mm. running their own book of business, honing a skill set that no one will ever be able to take away from them. Sounds enticing. Yeah, you have to keep that in perspective mm -hmm. because this doesn't apply to all people. Some people see being a mortgage loan originator, hey, it's a great part-time gig. Mm. Oh, it's something that I can do on the side. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I can make 60, 70 grand working 20, 30 hours a week. Sounds great. Where Flexible I schedule. Sign me up. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But this show's not for you. Okay. Okay? The, we don't teach that. We don't coach that. Right? What we're going to talk about is the day in the life of a successful mortgage loan originator. Okay. You're going to hear us, um, me, but you're going to jump in because <laughs> yes. you were part of this too. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're probably going to reference an episode that we did eons ago. When I say eons, eons. like nine months ago. Yeah. Um, do you know that we're coming up? I think we're 10 months. Yes. So we're going to hit 100 episodes probably and right. one year. Yeah, all in the same All in the same time period. Universe. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, one of the first episodes we ever did was theme days. Yep. Theme days allows someone to plan out their week in a very successful manner. Yeah. So let's start it. Okay. You ready to roll? You ready. Let's start with the hours you work. Okay. Okay. We are all about work-life balance. Yes. We want you to be involved in your children's lives. We want you to be involved in your community, in your church. We want you to have a good relationship with your partner or your spouse. Mm -hmm. But we also understand this is a career that you have chosen that allows you to make a quarter million, half a million, or even a million plus dollars a year with really no over-the-top formal education. You don't need a 33 on your ACT or a 1450 on your SAT. You don't need an MBA, yep. right? You just need to be driven, have above-average aptitude, mm -hmm. and want it. Okay, so with that, there's going to be times that you're going to have to make yourself available nights and weekends. Okay. There's going to be times that 5 p.m. and the whistle blows and you make a phone call home saying, not going to make it tonight. Not tonight. Yeah, not tonight. I'm going to need till 730 or 8. Maybe I have 17 total cost analysis worksheets I have to do because I'm all into mortgage coach. And that's, you know, a really badass uh, technology afforded to me and I want to use it. And I have that many people who need me to run numbers for them. Yep. Okay. This is your own business and it's a business that it reminds me of a life lesson. My uncle, Chris, Chris Jordan gave me. Okay. He said, and he was in the car industry for, for decades. He said, I've never met someone who made a hundred thousand dollars a year that didn't have to work their ass off. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you have to understand that. Um, cause there's going to be times when you hear us lay out the day in the life of a mortgage loan officer or mortgage loan originator, you're gonna be like, uh, mm -hmm. how am I going to get that done in 36 or 42 hours? Maybe you won't, maybe you won't tough pill to swallow. Yeah. For some. Yeah. Um, so let's go. All right. It starts with this. Number one. Number one. This is a real job. This is a profession. Your schedule needs to be predictable. You need to be predictable. It's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, period, end of story. That's it? Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Look, you may choose to come in and work 7 to 5 or 7 to 4. Cool. You may choose to work 9 to 6, 9.30 to 6.30. Cool. But be predictable and be consistent. Okay? I like to work 9 to 6. Mm -hmm. I like to 
exercise in the morning, read in the morning, drink two cups of coffee, run five miles, and get my daughter off to the bus stop. Mm. Therefore, my schedule is 9.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. Someone else may love to coach their daughter's softball. Mm -hmm. They may love to cook dinner for their family. Yep. They may need to pick the children up from daycare. Yep. Therefore, they do better seven to four. Yep. Whatever it is, you work it. Okay, this is not a, oh, so nice. One day oh, I work yeah. from home. One day I work from Starbucks and ah, I take off every third Wednesday. No, 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 no. Mm. You don't do that. You Look, you can aspire to do that. But don't start off doing that. That's like quasi retirement. That means you've made it. <laughs> yeah. That means you're making three, four hundred grand a year with a badass team that that has followed your lead and basically you've recreated yourself two or three times over. Mm. Therefore, you're not needed, maybe not even wanted. Very few people make it to that level. Wow. Right? John Maxwell calls that level five on, of his five levels of leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't start there, right? You don't start there. <laughs> yeah. Just like this. Little side note, a little bit of a, of a rabbit hole. Okay. You don't need an assistant to hit certain levels of achievement of production. Well, how am I supposed to? I'm too much work, man. I need an assistant to help fill more calls. And, yep. Oh, I'm just yep. My simple answer from experience, if you want it, you'll get it. And that means production. If you want to do 100 units a year, you'll do it. Whether you have zero assistants, whether you have one hand, three hands, or four assistants. Yeah. If you want it, you'll do it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to becoming a professional, uber-successful mortgage loan originator, you're doing the day in the life of, we're starting with your schedule. Because if you want to be successful in this business, you will set a schedule. You'll stick to it. You'll become predictable, mm -hmm. okay? So the first hour of your morning. Now, right. by the way, from experience, this works a lot better when you're coming in closer to 7.45 or 8 than the people that come in at 9.30. Why is that, Dio? Well, what I'm getting ready to say, yeah. you don't want to say what I'm going to say? Oh, no, first, I mean, yeah, you I, already, that, no, I mean, well, what I'm going to say is you have to plan your day. Yeah. Your first 25 to 45 minutes is simply checking voicemails from the night prior, returning emails from the night prior. You're going to look, pull up your pipeline. You're going to do a quick review of your pipeline. You're going to look for any potential fires or hurdles or alarms that need your attention because you want to be able to delegate whoever it is in your operations team that's going to put that fire out, mm. who's going to jump on that grenade. Mm. You want to take care of that in the morning. And you want to do that for multiple reasons. One, because is it fair to your processor, your processing manager, your underwriter, your closing manager, et cetera, is it fair for them not to hear from you until 11 a.m. Mm. that you, there's a hand grenade that you need them to jump on? Or is it better to let them know at 8.15, hey, I have a hand grenade. Can you make it a priority? Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, it's just, that's just what's fair to them. It's also how you get your operations team to work on um, a schedule that's more in par of what your expectations are. Right. It's a lot harder when someone's day has been going on for two and a half, three and a half hours. And, yeah. and all of a sudden, you decided you wanted to show up to work. Hey, stop what you're doing. I have, yeah. a fire, I have yeah. an alarm because it's, it's a fire drill for me, so it's a fire yes. drill for you now. Yes. Yeah. That's what unsuccessful mm. average loan originators do. Mm. They show up when they feel like it, and when they do, they expect the whole world to stop and, and heed to their needs. And it's like, no, motherfucker, where were you at 8.15 this morning mm. when I got here? You know? Yeah. Like... So if you're looking at day in the life of, you're going to get in the office, and I'm going to tell you you're going to get in 745 to 815. I just am. Again, not all people can for whatever reason. Correct. But that's what the successful day in the life looks like. Mm -hmm. That way, by 9 a.m., mm -hmm. you have first looked at your to-do list because we're going to end your day with creating a to-do list. Mm. I'm a huge fan of creating the next day's to-do list as the last thing you do the night before. Huh. And the reason why is that it allows you to recap that day's successes. It allows you to recap the things that you were supposed to accomplish, make notes of things that you didn't, and double check to make sure there isn't something that went overlooked. Because if something went overlooked and it's time sensitive, 
or it's relationship sensitive. By relationship sensitive, it's I told so and so I'd call them back by 4:30 and crap, it's five o'clock. Mm. Let me call them back today, right now. Mm-hmm. So you end every successful day with writing the next day's to-do list because it acts as a recap of your day. Damn, that's smart. Okay. So when I get in at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to review that checklist. I'm going to check my emails. I'm going to check my voicemails. I'm going to pull up my pipeline. I'm going to look for red flags, hand grenades, or alarms or Mm -hmm. fires. Address them so that by 9 a.m., all that's behind me. Mm. I need to do the number one and number two most important things that a successful professional mortgage originator has to do day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And do you know what those two things are? Uh, I do not, but I'm so excited for you to tell me right now. Prospect. Okay. And prospect some more. Prospect and prospect. Mm -hmm. Number one and number two. Number one and number two. Yes. If you are in the industry the way that I know it to be, you are a salesperson. You are a self-promoter. You are a marketeer. Mm. Okay. You have to knock out the number one and number two things first thing in the morning. And I'm going to say there's two reasons why you do it. And I'm going to ask you this question, John Coleman. Okay. Do you know why I love doing my cardio workout first thing in the morning? Well, I do because I do cardio as well. You feel great when you do it and once it's done and out of the way. Yeah. And what if I left it till 4.30 or 5.30 in the Uh, afternoon? You had a long day. Your legs are tired. It's a bit easier to find an excuse as to why not to get it done. Yeah. And it's also my least favorite of my exercising. Yeah. I prefer lifting weights. I would love nothing more but to throw 275 on the bench press and do it three to five times Mm. for five sets with three minutes rest in between. And I can check Instagram and I can make a work call and I can turn on, um, you know, crunk radio, which is one of my Pandora stations. So I do my cardio first thing because it's something I don't necessarily always enjoy. Mm. It's something that I know I'm going to feel amazing Mm. when it's done and to get it out of the way. Yeah. And by the way, cardio is is how I stay healthy both inside and out. I mean, right? That, it's, that, it, it's how I'm going to be able to have longevity. Parallel between parallel. that and right. Do you see? What? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So th- there's the parallel. Yeah. When your number one and number two priorities as a mortgage loan originator is to go out and, and, and lead generate to prospect, you have to make that your priority. You spend from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at a minimum doing prospecting activities. Okay. Now I'm a big fan of theme days. We've done a show way back eons and eons ago, like episode three, 10 months ago, (laughs) Yes, 10 months ago, um, called theme days. Yeah. Okay. I know. And I love theme days because look, I'm a dummy and as a dummy, I need things to be easy and I don't need to be trying to get super creative with, Oh God, what do I do today? Or what do I feel like doing? No Mm -hmm. theme days allow me to know what I'm doing. I know on Mondays in the gym, it's chest and tries. I know Tuesdays is legs and abs. I know Wednesday is a swim day. I know like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a regimented routine, so I don't have to think right. and everything gets done. By having that regimented routine in the gym, I know every body part is getting touched the appropriate amount of times That's in terms true. of being exercised. So Monday, my, my theme is I'm going to call all the realtors that I already have a really good relationship with, and I'm going to check in on them. Hmm. That's it. I'm going to check in on them. Um, I'm going to ask them who they came across over the weekend if they were working that need my services because I want to plan my week out, and I want to make sure I'm carving out enough time for them and their clients. Hmm. Maybe I have an event that I'm hosting or sponsoring that I want them to be aware of, make sure they're being invited to it. Um, Or maybe I just want to catch up over coffee or lunch. Okay. Okay. That's my reason for calling. And I want to touch, it could be 10, it could be 20, it could be 50. The more people you touch, the more opportunities you have for referrals, the more referrals you get, the more loans you'll close. Mm -hmm. So I know coaching companies teach, I think, 40. Right? 40 might be a lot for someone. So it might be 20. Just know this. 20 is better than 10 and 10 is better than zero. Yeah. Right? If you hit 40, high to the freaking five. Okay? But that's what I'm doing on Monday. If I do that... From 9 to 11, I have the whole freaking day to do anything else I may need to do. Mm-hmm. Now, what do I need to do? I need to take meetings, right? Whether it's a, a application um, that I'm taking 
whether it's uh, a coffee I'm going on, a closing I'm attending, mm-hmm. the various meetings that I need to be a part of, I try to schedule 10, 12, and 2. 10, 12, and 2. 10, 12, and 2. Yep, it allows me an hour for the meeting. It allows me travel time. It allows me um, to have time in between meetings to either prepare for the next meeting yeah. or to catch up on things that I missed, phone calls and emails during uh, the meeting. So I like to take my meetings 10, 2, and 12. And very rarely do I have a 10, 2, and 12. Mm-hmm. Or did I say that wrong? Yeah, 10, 10, 12, 12 and 2. two. I, th- I can yep. figure it. But even if I did, I'd be back at the office by 3.30, and it would give me two hours before I got to 5.30 yeah. to wrap up my day. Yeah. Now, look, there's going to be certain days that 5.30 doesn't work. Remember, I kind of yeah, alluded to that is. up front. Like, okay, those are the days that you know that you just stay late. So you'll find your own routine. I found a routine that everyone in my life that was important to me, my mom, my sister, my wife, my dad, and the gentleman that I coached youth sports with, everyone knew Monday sucked for Dio. Period. End of story. Yeah. Monday, I don't come home till 7.30 or 8. Just knew it. Monday, based on my experiences in this industry, was my late day. Yeah. Tuesday wasn't. Wednesday would be. Mm-hmm. Thursday and Friday weren't. So I even tried to schedule late days if I could. Really? Yep. And then I got to a point to where on Mondays, I didn't take 10 a.m. meetings, only noon and 2. Right, but but just keep in mind you're trying to create a schedule. You're trying to be day in the life of. Yeah. So we're only on Monday. Okay. You take your meetings ten, noon, and two. Gotcha. You start your day in the office. You end your day in the office. Period. End of story. This is where you make money in the office. No, but I no. Nope. Shut up. But nope. Nope. I look. I know it's COVID, and we'll make some caveats for COVID. Some. I don't know one uber successful mortgage loan originator who has built their business by working from home, who has built their business from having oddball hours. I know at least half a dozen, if not a dozen, mortgage professionals who W2'd over $1 million last year. Damn. Okay. So when I say these things, I'm not pulling it out of my ass. Yeah. Like I'm looking at what individuals that make that type of coin, what they do. And I'm talking about markets like Virginia, Atlanta, Orlando, Minnesota. So it's not like LA. Arizona, yeah. New Mexico. Yeah, I'm not like, this is a full spectrum of, of geography. Yeah. I believe all four time zones. Hmm. So... This is what you need to do. Start your day in the office. You end your day in the office. Tuesdays, same thing. You're going to get at 8 o'clock. By the way, you ended Monday. Worst case, right? You had a meeting at, at 2. It will last until 3. It was a half hour across town. So you got back to the office at 3.30. And you have total cost analysis worksheets to work on. You have loans to structure. You have people to call back. You have prequals to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Cool. You can do all of that from 3.30 to 5.30 or 6.30 or 7.30. Those are all things that you can work on Really? Yeah, during what some people call yellow time. You have green time, that's selling time, yellow time, and then you have red time. Now, see, as a novice in this industry, I will say, I would have started with that. I would come in the office. Sure, I'll make it in early, but I'm going to tackle that loan structuring stuff, and I want to make sure Mrs. Jones' file is taken care of. I want to do all that other stuff before I do what you said do. Yeah, no. That's, That's what average to below average producers do they spend their whole entire day working on that one file that may or may not ever close because all you're doing is researching but you make you make yourself feel good about yourself because you're learning because you're calling the scenario desk and you're waiting on your underwriter to get back to you and i'm busy because i'm waiting on stuff no these are knock out the most important things first you can research and structure from 3 30 to 7 30 at night you just can and Mrs. Jones probably isn't under contract. She's probably not looking to close. She's probably wanting a loan. She wants to buy a house, but she needs someone like you to help her. Cool. This is your schedule. You will be able to do your research between 3.30 and 7.30 and get back to her in an appropriate time frame. Look, 24 to 48 hours when you're researching is an appropriate time frame. You cannot allow the Mrs. Joneses of the world and their scenarios to distract you from doing your number one and number one job. Your number one and number two job. Um, Tuesdays, we use Tuesdays as status update Tuesday, 
right? You have loans in the pipeline because you're a successful loan officer. So you're getting in at, at, at eight o'clock. You're going to review the to-do list that you wrote Monday night before you left the mm-hmm. office. Your to-do list, I'm going to keep on repeating this so people understand it. Your to-do list is as much about letting you know what you need to accomplish the following day or the rest of the week as it is a way for you to run through everything that you accomplished mm-hmm. that day mm-hmm. to make sure you didn't forget about something. Okay, so it's a great way to, in your mind, go through your day, recap and then write down things that you forgot to do. Mm -hmm. You may even choose, this is a um, DOism. It's worked for me for 10 plus years. I take one phone call home with me a night, if not two, and I try to bring one phone call with me for the morning. Hmm. I drive, like many people, 25 minutes on average to and from work. Hmm. So if I'm not listening to like a Business Wars podcast or I'm not listening to a John Morgan podcast, um, I am on the phone. Hands-free, of course, Mm -hmm. hands-free devices, but I'm on the phone. I can knock out a prequal on the phone. Those people don't need me sitting in front of a computer to do my job. They need need me to teach them about what it takes to finance a home, answer their basic questions about income and assets and LTVs and loan programs and how much does this payment correlate to this sales price. Hmm. I can talk to you about your credit in general without yet pulling your credit. So there's certain things that I make sure I take with me. This allows me to multitask. This allows me to make sure that I can actually take a 45 hour work week and condense it into 40 hours because I'm adding a half hour of phone calls Mm -hmm. in the morning and a half hour of phone calls in the evening during my drive home. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So um, the next morning, here we are back on Tuesday. I'm going to speed this one up. Jesus. That's good. Uh, Back on Tuesday, I'm going to look at the to-do list. I'm going to check emails. I'm going to check voicemails. Because something I have found as a successful loan officer, Uh you got to pick up the phone when it rings. Period. End of story. You have to be responsive. People have to trust that you're going to be responsive. They have to trust that you're going to be reliable because you pick up the phone when it rings. Because you reply to emails. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to carve that into my day. Um. So in the morning, I want to double check any emails that came across my desk past whatever time at Mm -hmm. night o'clock it is that you don't, um, you don't check emails. I want to reply to them, right? I want to call people back that maybe called me after hours, but I was already gone for the night. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure people understand that I'm, that I'm responsive. I want to check my to-do list. I want to pull up my pipeline, rinse, repeat, just like I did on Monday, pull up my pipeline. Where are my hand grenades? Where are my fires? Where are my flags? Who do I need to um, quarterback this out to? Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to send a quick email to the closing department. I need to loop in my processor. Maybe I send mm-hmm. a, uh, something to my processor asking him or her to make sure that they take care of something later that day. Whatever it is, at 9 o'clock, I need to be done with it because at 9 o'clock, I need to sell. Yeah. I need to prospect. Theme days remind me, what do I do on Tuesdays? Well, on Tuesdays, those that's when I do my status update calls. I have loans in the pipeline, whether it's 3 six or 13, Mm -hmm. there's going to be a listing agent, a buyer's agent, a title company, and a borrower that all are relying on me to proactively reach out to them with an update on their file. So you got somebody to call or reach out to in that pipeline. Yeah. I don't want to hear that. Oh, I reached out to him yesterday. I don't, there's no, no one to call. This is a sales call. This is a sales call. This is when you can check in. How are me and my team doing? This is where you can check in to ask, Hey, which of your neighbors would love to refinance the way that you're refinancing. This is a great opportunity. Hey, um, looking around around at your coworkers, knowing how cheap interest rates are, who else in your office do you think is going to be buying a house this year? Yeah. I'd love to work with them too. Right? This is an opportunity to cross sell the listing agent. Calling the title company? Oh my gosh. A, very few lenders call title companies with a proactive status update. And in certain markets, title companies are on pins and needles. They're afraid to order things like surveys or mm. or title exams if they're afraid the financing is going to fall through. So if you're able to call the title company, give them a unprovoked update, status update on the file, title companies, do you know what their job is too? Mm-mm. Their job is to network with realtors, just like mortgage loan officers. Okay. Yeah, title companies also are one of the first people to know when a transaction is going sideways. You make friends with a title company, you let them know that you specialize in rescue loans and that you can close loans in two or three weeks. Hey. Yes. So Tuesdays, I'm knocking out my Tuesday status update calls. That's what I'm doing between the hours of 9 and 11. It may be 9 and noon, depending on how big my pipeline is. Hmm. 
if I know I have a big pipeline and I do status updates from nine to noon, then I don't have a 10 o'clock appointment. My appointments start from noon all the way through four o'clock that day. All right. I end my day the same way. I always end it back at the office. I may have left. I may have left between noon and four. Maybe I had a lunch appointment, but I always Mm. come back. I come to the office to get shit done. I leave with a purpose. I come back to the office to finish my day. This is the day in the life of a successful mortgage loan originator. Wednesdays. Yes, hump day. Hump day. Yes, it's almost over. Let's rest. Let's party. Let's not work as hard as we did Monday, Tuesday. Possibly. Yeah. Oh. Possibly. What? Do work-life balance, homie. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Monday was a 12-hour day. Maybe Tuesday was a 10-hour day. Mm. Wednesday, you leave mm. at 5. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to work at Starbucks because my friend, you know, uh... No. You go meet your friend at Starbucks, buy him or her a coffee, especially if there's someone who can refer you consistent business or they're looking to buy a home and they need you to finance it. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. But you tend to end your day in the office. Look, there's always going to be anomalies. Yeah, bro, well, I have this uh, monthly standing happy hour that starts at 4. Great. High five, kudos, you're a step ahead. Of course, (laughs) that's an exception. Yeah, gotcha. Of course. But more times than not except for those days when you have a B&I meeting at 4 or you mm-hmm. have a happy hour that starts at 4, you're going to end your day back at the office. So Wednesday, you're going to roll in right at 8 o'clock like you normally do. Yep. Turn on your computer, check emails, check voicemails, review the to-do list yep. that you wrote the day prior, yep. the night, the last thing you did before you left the office yep. was you wrote your to-do list for the following day. Check for grenades, check for fires, check for emergencies, alarms. Yes. See what I can quarterback out to anybody else. There you go. And now you have to do your number one and number two job, which is prospect prospecting. So we follow theme days. Wednesday has a theme. Wednesday's theme is past clients. Okay. We work our past clients. It's real easy. We have a technology, and I'm sure most mortgage companies do, Mm -hmm. that we can pull up every client that we closed that month, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. We have simple scripts where we reach out to them, and we usually call it a mortgage review. Right? Mm-hmm. Hey, John Coleman, this is Dustin, owner at Waterstone. How you been? Hey, deal. Long time no talk. Yeah, What's it's up? been like three years. Hey, do you know it was actually three years ago this month that you bought your house with us? That's crazy, man. Yeah, and that's it. Like, I go right into it. Look, I'm not trying to be JC's friend. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to invite him to my wedding. I'm his mortgage advisor. I'm his mortgage loan originator. I'm calling him to show him gratitude because I appreciate the fact that he chose to use me three, five, seven, ten years ago last year. Mm. I want to let him know how much I appreciate him and let him know that I'm calling to do his annual mortgage review. Period. End of story. I try to do 15 or 20 of those every Wednesday. Now, depending on how big your past client database is, like Mm. if you on average close 100 loans a year, that's 8.33 a month. So if you've been keeping a database for the past eight years, eight times eight is 64. You got people to call in that database. You have anywhere between 30 to 130 in your database. Yeah. Divide that by four, and that'll, that'll let you know how many you have to call each Wednesday. Yeah. Right? So if it's 100, you're calling 25. Mm. If it's 30, you're calling like eight. Mm. Right? Mm. That's what you're doing. Then same thing. You have meetings. 10, noon. And two, Mm -hmm. now sometimes those meetings may be, oh, I know every third Wednesday, my branch has their branch meeting. Yeah. So that's on your calendar always and forever. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't take clients between noon and one because your branch is having their branch meeting. Right. And you need to participate. Even if you are a know-it-all top producer who's better than your manager, you're still a team member of your branch. Yeah. Make it a priority. You can hear the manager and me starting to come out a little bit. Uh, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. What time should you get on Thursday? Uh, let me think. Uh, 7.45, 8? Yeah. 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 Ding, 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 ding. Yep. 7.45, 8 o'clock. You roll in. You're going to turn on your computer. Turn You're going to check your voicemail. Check your email. <laughs> you possibly even had a 7.30 a.m. phone call. Uh-oh. Which, by the way, do you know who I love to call at 7.30 in the morning? People you like and trust. The person who called me at 9 p.m. and left me a voicemail. Right. I make sure they are my first phone call. Hey, I may even call them at 7 a.m. Right. Just right get... after my run when I'm walking the neighborhood doing a hey, cool down. Hey, I'm amped. I just run five, five miles. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Hey, John, I'm so sorry I missed your call at 930 last night, but uh, how can I help you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but no, it's you start your day the same way. Be predictable. Yeah. Now Thursday needs a theme day. Okay. I'm I'm excited for this one. There's a couple things we haven't talked about. Okay. We have not talked about TBDs. Okay. We have not talked about targets. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you how we do things. You can take this and obviously put your own spin on it, but not too much. Mm-hmm. You get too much, it may be unproven. We don't like things that are unproven. Mm-hmm. Thursdays, those are the days that we work our realtors or builders that we don't really have good relationships with. Okay. Yeah, these are people. These are targets. Maybe I've had them on a drip campaign, right? Maybe I've been sending them uh, gifts every week. Maybe a signed copy of Never Split the Difference. Mm. Hey, JC, it's one of my favorite books. Hope it helps you negotiate a record year. Mm-hmm. I'll be in touch with a business card in there. Gotcha. Right? Maybe the next week I follow up with a phone call. Hey, did you get the book I sent you? Yeah, look, all I want to do is meet with you. I'm going to keep on sending you these gifts until you say yes. You know? <laughs> but but Thursdays is a good day to know that, hey, this is when I work my whales. This is when I work the big targets. Okay. The people that I want to meet with that I haven't already sat down with. Mm. Same thing applies to the whole take my, my, mm-hmm. take my meetings from 10 noon to yep. by 4 o'clock. I really want to be shutting my day down, doing my to-do list making sure if there's anything that I forgot to do or I didn't get a chance to get around to that I'm either taking that phone call on the road mm-hmm. on my drive home or I'm um, calling them immediately, apologizing for the, the delay and giving that person the information that they reached out to me for. Right. Um, and Fridays. Fridays, day in the life of a loan officer. I'm going to throw a little uh, extra special spin into this one. Okay. It starts just like Thursday. Look, you may roll on at 8.15 because maybe you're hungover. Okay. All well and good. Sam Uncle Chris, true story. Uh, this is life advice, right? Yeah. One of my favorite uncles. Yeah. Um, he was a drill sergeant in the Army when I was like 9 years old or 12 years old. He actually let me spend a day with him oh, God. at Camp Le- Leonard Wood or Fort that's Leonard Wood. Where, that's where the seed was planted. Now I, yeah. Now I, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so the same guy who said he never has met someone who made over $100,000 a year, didn't work their dick off, mm. um, also told me that the only acceptable reason – for being late to work was because you're hungover. I like that. I can live, I can drive with that. Yeah. He was like, look, don't call in sick. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> don't call in oh, yeah. sick. Hurt through the, you're going to hurt the yeah. whole day. You're going to yeah. be hurting. But he hey. said, you may just need to call and say, look, I just rolled out of bed. I'm on my second Gatorade. And I'm on my fourth Advil. Right. I'll be there as soon as I can. Yep. That's acceptable. As long as you don't make a habit out of it. I know. So maybe Friday, maybe, Maybe you don't get until 8.20, 8.15. 8.15. Yeah. yeah. But you come in. Before 9. Same thing. Turn on your computer. You check your to-do list. Uh, yeah, yeah. You pull Body up your yeah, pipeline. Grenades, fire line, return, yep. Yeah. Yep. And then on Friday, Friday's kind of free day. It's free to do as you please. Now, if I'm going off of a theme, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you that one very popular coaching circuit will tell you that's when you reach out to your business professionals, CPAs, HR managers, divorce attorneys. Ah. And that's when you would reach out to them, either to schedule an appointment, ask them how they're doing, ask them if they have any clients that that need your services, Mm -hmm. financial advisor, same thing. Ask them to lunch. Okay, cool. And you may very well do that. Mm -hmm. But we haven't talked about TBDs at all. Okay, TBDs are some of the most important sales calls you'll ever make. These are people who've already been referred to you, right? You've already worked your butt off Mm -hmm. to get that referral. But for whatever reason, they're not under contract yet to purchase a home or they have not agreed to a refinance where you have locked them in and they have signed their disclosures. Okay. So they're to be determined. Mm. The biggest mistake I have found myself as a loan originator, but even business professionals in general, let alone loan officers make, is they don't work their TBDs. Why is that? Because they just... I don't know. I can't even answer for myself why I didn't. Besides pure laziness. You think I did? That's just pure laziness. But it's like you worked so hard for that lead. Why would you not call them until they buy or die? Why would you not make it a part of your normal business plan that you are going to call your TBDs hmm. until they buy or die? You may choose to call your TBDs on Friday. Why on Friday? Because there's nothing worse. And by the way, this would be Friday morning. Hmm. There'd be no, there's nothing worse than a loan officer. And this happens. 
This is the special sauce I was going to share with you about Fridays. Okay. Fridays roll uh, happen like this. You come in at 8.15. You're a little bit worn out from the awesome week you've done. Mm -hmm. You went to that happy hour. You went out to dinner Thursday night. You stayed up late. You drank too much. You have a little bit of a headache, and you're cool because once you get through your pipeline, your email, your mm -hmm. return voicemail, it's 9 o'clock, and you're kind of like, Whew. I may just play on Facebook. Yeah. I may check Twitter. I'm just going to kind of veg. And you kind of have a great morning. Yeah. People stop by your your office or your desk. You kind of chit-chat about the weekend. What are your plans? Hey, let's all go to lunch. Yeah, we're all going to lunch. By like 1.30, you're texting your spouse or significant other. Hey, honey, I might even be able to leave here a little bit early. Maybe I'll get out at 4. Mm. And I promise you, at 3.30, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and everyone and their brother, oh, yeah. ah. they all realize that for the past four and a half days, there was something they had to do. What I have to do? There's something I have to do. My wife told me to do something. Oh, oh that realtor, that builder. Oh, yeah. I need to call the lender to get a pre-approval letter before the weekend. No. Oh. And all hell breaks loose from 3.30 to 5.30. Mm. Both phones, mm. cell phone, office phone, are ringing off the hook. <laughs> ding, 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 text messaging, emails. Phones jumping. You're throwing your headset against the wall because you can't get to it all quick enough. And you're thinking, where were these people from 10, 11, noon, 1, 2? When I called my wife at 1.30 and told her, great news, yeah. honey, I'm coming I, home yeah. early. She went and took a shower and shaved her legs. Yeah. And then I don't get home till 6.30? Uh-oh. I should have never called. I should have never called. But at 1.30, I felt that way. So here's what I here's what, what, what I have figured out. Okay. Nowhere along my theme days, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, did I discuss your TBD calls. Mm -hmm. You can, if you want to, in those morning hours, along with on Monday, your realtor calls. Mm-hmm. Do some TBD calls. Sprinkling on there. Tuesday, when you're doing your Tuesday status update calls, take five TBDs and call them. On Wednesday, mm -hmm. when you're doing your past client database calls, call some TBDs. On Thursday, when you're calling your realtor builder prospect calls, the realtor and builders that you want to work with but don't already, mm -hmm. sprinkle in some TBDs. Mm -hmm. You can 100% do that. Or you can say, you know what? I don't have that many business professionals that I'm actually targeting or calling on. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really been a big staple of my, of my business practice. Mm -hmm. So maybe I only have eight to 10 to call and not 40 the way I do on Mondays yeah. and Tuesdays, yeah. I'm going to knock my TBDs out on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. That way I prevent people from all calling me at the same time from 3.30 to 5.30. Mm -hmm. And I can also knock out my TBDs because they were the most important phone call I could have made because these people have already expressed interest in working with me and my firm. Right. right? It's, and if you're really, 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 really good, which if you've made it this far into the podcast, you at least want to be really, right, really, right, really good. Right, yep. Every time you call a TBD, it's yet another sales call to the agent who referred that prospective borrower to you. Hmm. Because now you can call that prospective or that, that agent hmm. of the prospective borrower with an update. Hey, John Dustin over at Waterstone, just want to let you know I talked to uh, Sam and Susie Smith, mm -hmm. and they told me blah, blah, blah. Hey, JC, before I let you run. Right, that's all you need. Yeah. Got him. Boom. It may be, hey, JC, Dustin over at Waterstone Mortgage. Man, I'm having the hardest time getting a hold of Sam and Susie Smith. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from them? Mm. I mean, whatever the case may be, let me get an update. Yeah. Oh, hey, while well, I have you on the phone. Yeah, they're already attentive. Do you they're think you're in Nimi over the weekend? You have any new buyers that you're out showing properties to? Hey, maybe you're available this weekend. Maybe you're not available this weekend. So finally, day in the life of. Mm -hmm. Day in the life of never, ever, ever plan on working nights and weekends, but always plan on making yourself available nights and weekends. Successful loan originators make themselves available nights and weekends. More times than not, all the person needs you to do is run some numbers, answer a couple questions, mm -hmm. all things that you can normally do from your kid's soccer mm -hmm. tournament right from a gymnastics meet while sitting at the pool with a sangarita in your hand. That's profound because I, I, you never think that because like, yeah, I can run credit. I can talk to you while I'm doing, I'm shopping at Publix. I don't necessarily need to be physically at my desk. And I think that's where people get caught up because they're like, oh, I got to have yeah, to be physically there. Today. Yeah, no one's asking you to host hours. But if someone calls and says, hey, what's the minimum credit score for a conventional investment property? You don't need your computer. You should be able to spit that off mm. top of your head. And even if you can't, you can at least say, you know what? The guidelines on that recently changed. I'm not home right now, but I will be home in two hours. I'll give you a buzz back in two hours. I have it saved in an email. 
I tried to use it on wifey. Why didn't you clean the dishes? You know what? The <laughs> guidelines on that recently changed. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. It didn't work? It did not work. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no. I mean, that's it. The day in the life of a successful mortgage loan originator is one in which it's consistent and predictable. And there are themes to every day because those themes keep you consistent. Those themes keep you on track. It's one in which you make prospecting your number one and number two goal every single day. You knock it out early the same exact way I knock out my cardio first thing in the morning. Why? Because it's what I like to do the least. It's the most important for my overall health. Mm. And I feel freaking awesome when I do do it. I'm in a better mood when I do it. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want the rest of your day to be awesome? Because between the hours of eight and three, it's only three hours, by the way, you're like, I'm freaking accomplished. Yeah. And I still have another six hours to go. Mm. I still have another five hours to go. Mm. And it's during those five hours that you can work on pre work on deal structuring, if you get sidetracked doing research on can you do a single wide property on lease hold back land, yeah. you can do that. And yes, there was probably better uses of your time, but you didn't bastardize the most important things, right? You just bastardized those things that are in the middle of the most important and the not important at all. Yeah. But that's what a successful mortgage loan originator does. And finally, you got to take time off. You got to take time off. You just do. Um, whether you find a buddy in the office and that buddy covers your book and in return you cover their book and it may cost you a $500 bottle of scotch, mm. you got to get away, even if it's just for a long weekend. Put the phone down. Um, full disclosure, it was a decade before I took a full week off. What? A decade. I worked in this business for over 10 years before I took off a full week. And it's still rare for me to fully take off because I've learned that certain things like I can get up in the morning, drink my coffee, look at email and at least delete all the nonsense <laughs> yeah. and forward all the things mm -hmm. like I can quarterback while I'm on vacation. I feel good. And my wife and kids don't give me the evil eye. Yeah. But in general, it's just good for your soul and good for your psyche. You got to find a way to take time off. Yeah. Um, and eventually team build. You will eventually team build and team building. And maybe you already have team built. So at which point it's up to you and your loan partners to decide who does which of the task, but all the same principles apply. You're mm -hmm. still getting in. You're still checking emails and voicemails mm -hmm. and pipeline mm -hmm. to do list. You're still following theme days. You're still making your sales calls your number one, your number two priority. That's whether you have a team of four or a team of one, mm. the same principles apply. And once you have accomplished and conquered this lifestyle, mm -hmm. scaling becomes way easy. Mm. I mean, think about this. You were making 20 calls to realtors. What if you go to 40? What if 40 becomes 60? Mm. You were only calling eight professionals on Friday. Mm -hmm. Those are HR mm -hmm. Uh, managers, um, CPAs. CPAs, yep. What if you bumped it up to 20? Right? You can scale that. All you, all you need is more people, more competent bodies to come work mm. on your team and represent you and what you do. Yeah. So once you get the day in the life, the calendar yeah. dialed in, that's when you can bump up your sales activities, your prospecting activities, generate more leads, more leads to turn to more closings. And every time you hire someone, you should be hiring so you can maintain what you just built. You should never hire thinking, well, if I build it, they will come. Bullshit. Mm. Build it. Build it. Put in the hours. Put in the sweat. Make some mistakes. Hone your processes. Get better. Sometimes loan officers don't need an assistant. They need to get better. Ooh, ouch. That hits them. Mm. Yeah, get better. But if okay, feel pain. Make that pain a uh, force change. Mm -hmm. And then with the force changed, if you continue to produce at a high level, then hire someone to allow you to maintain the level you've achieved. Mm -hmm. And so that you can rinse and repeat and do it once again, mm -hmm. where now you'll grow it, feel pain again, work on becoming better. You'll get better, but the pain will still be there. So then you'll have to hire in order to maintain yep. and then possibly take it to the next level. That is how you go from five to eight, eight to 12 and 12 to 20. It happens just like that. I've seen it dozens of times. I've witnessed it. I've witnessed 
some are making 180, then 360, then 600, then a million two. Last year, two million. What? Yeah. I've experienced that. Like, not firsthand. Yeah. As a manager, as a leader in the industry, as a coach, as a mentor, yes. And do those people that make that kind of coin, are they following these? They do this shit. I didn't make this up. I stole it. <laughs> swipe and adapt. You sw I swiped and adapted <laughs> it. Yes. But this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Day in the life of a mortgage loan originator. If you like the stuff that we spit on this show, I encourage you to please share it. Mm. Please pay it forward. Turn someone else on to what we do. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram at the Loan Officer Podcast. I'm on LinkedIn as Dustin Owen. We're on LinkedIn as the, the Loan, Loan Officer, Officer Podcast. Podcast. Um, we're all over YouTube. We love your comments. We love your suggestions. We love your thumbs up. Yeah. Look, your thumbs down make me cry. But if you truly hate what we're doing, hate all you want. Troll. <laughs> JC calls you a troll. <laughs> but um, he's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. This is the Loan Officer Podcast. We appreciate you tuning in. We look forward to you checking us out on our next episode. Deuces. Peace. Peace.